Welcome to Stand in the Gap Today from the American Pastors Network. We proclaim truth in the public square by connecting a biblical worldview and constitutional principles to the most significant news of the day. Simple, careful, and truthful. That's Stand in the Gap Today. Now, here's your host. Welcome to the program. I'm Dr. Isaac Crockett, and uh, the Honorable Sam Rohr is my co-host today. And Sam, of course, is the president of the American Pastors Network, the regular host of this program. And so uh, a lot of times on Fridays, we'll ask Sam some special questions. Well, today, we want to really just take a special time to, more or less, uh, Sam, for me to just kind of interview you about Stand in the Gap, but more than just Stand in the Gap, about the American Pastors Network, which Stand in the Gap Media is is a ministry of the American Pastors Network. And we've mentioned it already uh, throughout this year, but this we've, we're we coming on, this is our 10th year of the American Pastors Network. And uh, Sam, I, it's got me thinking as we started talking about this, uh, you know, looking back 10 years ago, and it reminded me that for me, I think our relationship, I have to look back more than 10 years ago, going back to the early 2000s, uh, I had heard of you. I got to know one of your sons, David, quite well when I was in school and knew of you. And then in 2008, 2009, I moved to Berks County, Pennsylvania, to to take a church there that we were kind of replanting in Hamburg. And you were my... Um, my representative. And so I was a citizen in your territory there. I remember putting out the uh, the political signs with your name on it and things like that in our yard. And I remember you getting together as an elected official that loved the Lord and you know felt called into that as your calling. I remember you getting together with uh, other pastors, including myself, and some of the things we did. And uh, just it was very encouraging, very helpful for me. And uh, it was kind of the beginning of, of some of the relationship we had that started to, to grow then uh, through those years. So, Sam, before APN, the American Pastors Network, was even imagined, even a thing— the Lord had been working in your life through your experiences, through his calling on you, but he had put a desire in your heart to help pastors, to help church leaders. So could you maybe talk to us a little about, bit about the vision that came up for the American Pastors Network, how it started even beyond just the 10 years ago when we actually officially started? Oh, Isaac, absolutely. And um, and I'll try to make this as quick as possible. We might want to come back and actually revisit some of this, because I know our viewers and our listeners would like to know your story as well as ours and how you have become a part of American Pastors Network as well. But for me, Isaac, it goes all the way back to when I was a little boy. And uh, my mom said, Sam, pick a hero from the Bible, because God's put people in the Bible for a reason. God drew me to Joseph and to Daniel. Daniel was was a politician. Joseph was a politician. Daniel was also a preacher. And when I was growing up, I felt, Lord, what should I do? What do you want me to do? And it was a calling of, well, pulpit or in office. Well, then, long story short, once I got married and had children, came to Pennsylvania, the Lord then opened up the door to first go into public office. That was in 1992. That is what the Bible says, the minister of God in government. When I got involved in the Pennsylvania legislature, then the Lord began to give me the opportunity to preach. And I found myself reaching out and conversing with pastors all across the state. And some of those gatherings pulled together. You were a part of those. And in that setting, then I began to realize, well, lo and behold, the, 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 the biblical duties of a pastor are almost identical to the biblical duties of someone in office. The only exception that I could find in Scripture was that the pulpit was commanded to preach the Word. Those in office, ministers of God, Romans 13, are really to execute and to carry out what the Word says. And I found they were identical, and I, so in any regard, that developed during my 18 years in office. I began to preach in a lot of churches became very, very closely associated with pastors in the pulpit. And then I began to understand biblically why the two so walk hand in hand. All right, then long story short, I ran for public office, governor, U.S. Senate. The Lord did not bring those to to fruition, but he was in all of that. And so at the conclusion of 2012, when I ran for U.S. Senate and did not win, then it was a matter of going before the Lord, Lord and saying, Lord, for, for 20 years, you had me involved as a minister of God in government. 
But I know that at the end of the day, the, probably the most important position that you've laid out is the pulpit. Because you've told that's where the preaching of the Word is to go forth, to inform the people in the congregation, as well as to preach truth into government. And from that, then, Isaac, the Lord laid a vision. How can that come together? And, and it was the blending. And we can get into some of how and how that came about. But the Lord said there is a way. And that came into fruition with what became the Pennsylvania Pastors Network, which was then combined and formed into the American Pastors Network, where we officially became a ministry, a 501c3 entity ministry in, in August, September. Uh, the legal time frame was in there of 2013. And that makes it 10 years from now. You know, and it was only last fall, I was, I was thinking, and the, all of a sudden it came to my mind, you know what, 2023, this year, it's the 10th anniversary. Hard to believe that that is the case, but what God has done in the process. But that's just a quick reference to the process that led in my life, which then led to the vision of American Pastors Network, which is now more 10, 10 years down the road, and amazing what God has done. And, and we're we don't have the time to go into any of these uh, topics as much as we would like to, but just looking at how um, God has used you to to voice God's truth in the public square before APN started, but especially now through the American Pastors Network, now through Stand in the Gap Media, radio, TV, across the nation, spreading out globally now. And uh, as you look at that, what are the, the parts that kind of the synergies that come together through what you learned having to take a stand in culture as a political leader as to now how you encourage those who are leaders behind the pulpit. What are, what are some of those uh, things? Because you said so many of those uh, points that, that God calls ministers of justice as well as ministers of, of the church in a very similar way. What are some of those overlapping things? Well, here's what the Bible says. When I went into office, I'm saying, all right, Lord, I'm in office now. You did it. What am I going to have to do? How, am I go how are you going to hold me accountable, Lord? for my performance in public office. I had never heard it preached before. And that's began my study. Here are the things. You'll find in Scripture, minister of God in government, the shepherd in the pulpit, minister, the, that pastor. These are common things. They're responsible to feed the people, feed the flock. They have a responsibility to guard and protect the flock. They have a responsibility to lead, provide direction, to that flock. And that is to the minister of God and government, those under him, as well as the pastor in the pulpit. They were the same thing. I'm saying, wow, isn't this amazing? And it was that coming together, it was that uniting and that revelation, Isaac, that even when I got out, I'm saying, you know, this is a part of what the pulpit needs to do. The pulpit really does need to teach the flock, defend the flock, guard the flock. Warn the flock of the wolves in the street. And that brings us to the core of our ministry. Emphasize the authority of Scripture, obedience to the authority of Scripture, implementing a biblical world view, and finding its ultimate end in fathers teaching their children and Christian education component. These are really what I talked about. This is what I think the Bible says. That's what American Pastors Network is all about. Well, thank you, Sam, and praise the Lord uh, you know, for all of those things. We're talking today on this uh, edition of Staying in the Gap today, uh, a decade of faith and courage, looking at how the American Pastors Network was started. We'll be right back after this. Eleven years ago, God changed my calling from standing in the gap for truth in public office to speaking truth from the pulpit into the public square. A dozen pastors linked arms with me, and God moved. In the fall of 2013, 10 years ago, the American Pastors Network began. State chapters started. Stand in the Gap Radio and TV were born. And God's used so many of you to bring this to pass. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's a perfect time to glorify God. Look to the next five years, should He tarry, and invite you to help us reach millions more with a biblical worldview and the tools to stand in the gap for truth. Here's how you can help. For our East Coast listeners, save the date of Tuesday, November 14th for our 10th anniversary Forging Ahead celebration. Write a letter of gratitude sharing how God's used this program in your life and prayerfully consider a generous 10th anniversary APN love gift. 
For more information, go to StandInTheGapMedia.org. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, God told the fathers, diligently teach your children the ways of God. BJU Press K-12 textbooks are designed to help parents do just that. Whether you teach your children at home, online, or in Christian school, make sure they're getting an integrated biblical worldview instruction. In our nation's early days, Pennsylvania's William Penn understood God's requirement for freedom and national blessing, and he emphasized the necessity of parents and government leaders providing for a virtuous or godly education of the youth. Sadly, our children in government schools today are being taught historical falsehoods, immorality, and evolution. Like a roaring lion, the devil's stealing our children's hearts and minds through deceit and lies. But a rigorous, godly education can still raise up Daniel's and Joseph's, Esther's and Ruth's. A friend of freedom and your partner in godly K-12 education, BJU Press is here for you. Don't take chances with your children. Visit BJUPress.com for your best option. I'm Ruth Kramer with Mission Network News. Afghanistan is turning into a hotbed of Islamic terrorism under Taliban rule. The United Nations warns against a security vacuum, saying al-Qaeda and Islamic State K are growing in numbers and capacity. Despite the dangers, believers choose to stay and maintain a witness for Christ. You can help them through the Voice of the Martyrs USA at our website. And then pray that Afghan Christians can persevere through opposition and persecution. In other news, when you hear theological education, what comes to mind? You might think of stuffy lecture halls, hours of book work, or prestigious seminaries. PTEE, the Program for Theological Education by Extension, is known for its accredited live and online programs. Now, they're trying to make quality training accessible to the average believer through mobile learning. You can help Christians throughout the Middle East and North Africa become strong leaders. Connect with PTE at missionnews.org to learn how. Mission Network News, a service of One Way Ministries. I'm Ruth Kramer. Here's yet another archaeological discovery that confirms what the Bible says. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street with The Point. Well, doves play a serious role in Scripture. A dove confirmed to Noah the waters were receding, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism in the form of a dove, and now doves are confirming the Bible's historical reliability. According to a new study, analysis of bird remains excavated in Jerusalem confirm the species of birds, pigeons, doves that were indeed sacrificed in the temple, as the Bible suggests. Now, many of the Bible's historical claims are questioned by skeptical scholars. Some doubted that the Israelites sacrificed doves in accordance to Mosaic law because they're not domesticated like other sacrificial offerings. Maybe they offer chickens, not doves. While the vast number of dove bones discovered near the Temple Mount suggests, yet again, the Bible is a reliable source of history. And we should expect no less, since the Bible claims that God acted in and is still acting in not just human hearts, but human history. I'm John Stone Street. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today. For more information, visit our website at standinthegapradio.com. Welcome back to the program. I'm Isaac Crockett, and I'm talking with Sam Rohr about how God started the American Pastors Network. And we really go back more than 10 years ago, and, and as Sam was talking, there's been a calling on his heart and a, and a calling placed on his life since he was just a young boy, and uh, which wasn't that long ago, right, Sam? Uh, but uh, w- w- it's neat to see how God led you in, in, you know, as a minister of justice in, in politics and elected office, and then uh, through that, the connections you had with churches, your own home church that you've, has been a, a great part of what you've done. And uh, and then working with pastors, and so there, there's so much. <laughs> Again, we'll, we'll have some more programs to talk about this, but there was so much going on behind the scenes that led to God opening up the American Pastors Network. But uh, Sam, you know, so many times when people think of our ministry, the APN or Staying in the Gap, they think of you. Um, they they maybe think of some of us other co-hosts. They might think of Tim, you know, the producer, and they hear him a little bit. They might even think of some of our partners, BJU Press, with uh, Christ-centered biblical worldview, um, you know, curriculum for young people. They might think of Capstone and different ministries. They might think of some of our special guests, like like a George Barna or folks from Answers in Genesis. But there are a lot of people involved with Staying in the Gap, all the way to all of our listeners and those who give to us generously. But even beyond that, there were a lot of people that God used in your life to to plant different seeds and to help push and open doors that that created the, the opening then for the American Pastors Network. So I, I want to talk about some of that and look at a little bit of the scope of how many people are involved uh, that, that many people will never know about. 
and uh, and then get into maybe some of the specific people. So um, uh, I, I guess just to get started, what what can you tell us about the scope of the involvement of, of the numbers of people that make up what we know as the American Pastors Network? Well, Isaac, I'll just, just give a couple of examples because there are far too many, but it is this principle that we're wanting to do uh, we'll talk more about our 10th anniversary celebration because we said, you know, this is a perfect time uh, to look back, thank God for what he's done. Look around, thank God for what he's done. Look ahead and pray for what God will yet do. That's the essence, uh, I think, and I think the principle is set in Scripture, uh, that we do that. God told the people of Israel, uh, you know, I'm going to give you blessings, but when I give you blessings, don't forget that I'm the one who gave it to you. Gratefulness is a key thread we want to run through that, and thanking people who actually responded to God moving in their heart early on with a vision, an idea of this concept of American Pastors Network, or a couple I'll just mention right now. For instance, back in 2012, the, end of t- the middle of 2012 is when the concept of this began, and, uh, and so I went to uh, a dozen pastors from Pennsylvania in whose churches that I had preached during one of my statewide runs. I had gotten to know them. I knew their love for the Lord. They did not know each other. I think only two of the 12 knew each other. They were from all over Pennsylvania. They were from different persuasions, um, but they were all Bible believers and believed in the authority of Scripture. Convened a meeting of them. We sat down. I laid out the concept. I said, you guys, can you understand it? Are you, can you be supportive of it? And they all linked arms with each other and said, yes, we will. And that formed for me an indication from God that God was in it. And we had our beginning team out of which then came a core directive team and and all of that. So that is one, that was a momentous occasion at the beginning. I'll share that one. Um, Then, then there was how are we with no money? going to become an, a ministry. How does that happen? And uh, we had no money. We had nobody behind us. We still don't have big people behind us. It's not one of those things. We're dependent upon the Lord, uh, on God's people. And uh, into that came a, a group called Capstone uh, Legacy Foundation, a Christian community foundation out of Southeast Pennsylvania, who had just a week or two before I had talked with them, made a decision that they were going to try and come up with something creative to help what ended up being us and some other people who were needing some help, we were able to become a 501c3 without going through all of the state, all the process and the cost. And whereas they did not provide to us funding, they provided to us a framework and a mechanism. God married that and gave to us something I could not have imagined. There's another one. Uh, Down the road after the ministry began, as an example, um, there were some uh, folks in the area, one, one, uh, one group from a, co- a radio station called WFYL. They're still in existence, right down here to the southeast of me. Uh, Alan and Susan Locke are their names. I'll mention them. They're fine people. Alan's now gone home with the Lord. But they reached out to me. I'd met them during the campaign, and they said, you know what? You guys are emphasizing something really unique. Um, we'll give you an hour of time on the weekend for a program. If, if you would want and could find pastors to actually preach like you're talking about, that was the opening. We said, wow, we haven't thought about radio. But that became Stand on the Gap weekend. And from that went another offering to, well, if you could do a program every day, we'll give you time, an hour a day. And that began Stand in the Gap today program. And then another pastor who was a part of that original 12 in Pennsylvania, middle part of the state, Pastor Denny Melanie, well-known by our listeners uh, listening right now in the middle part of Pennsylvania, uh, said, you know what, if, if you do that, I- I'll, I'll, put, I'll put your daily program and the weekend program and your minute program on my station. And he did. And then there was a station, two stations in the western part of Pennsylvania. So when we actually began, Isaac, the weekend program, it started from one couple, Alan and Susan, who were sensitive to the Lord and said, we want to help promote the truth. What can we do? Well, we can provide time. Came to us, opened the door. We prayed, stepped into it. 
that has now spread all across the country. So now, you know, now we're on 800 stations across the country. Unbelievable, uh, that kind of thing that has happened. And, uh, and so those are just a few people in a few points. And here's my emphasis here. There are many, many other people who, Isaac, who come along. I'm not even going to mention their names now because they may not want it to. I've had, I've had a doctor locally from the beginning has supported us every month for 10 years. We have people across this state who are listening who have prayed every day. We have widows. We have uh, pe- people of all ages that have given monthly for years and years. Don't want to have their names mentioned. They're doing it behind the scenes, but they have been so important. And I share that because we are thankful and grateful to people who have been moved by the Holy Spirit to participate and partner and have done what they have been able to do. You know, not everybody can provide a radio spot because they don't own a radio station. Hmm. Not everybody can provide $1,000 because all they have is a widow's mite. Well, what does God want? Just give what we can. And, um, and so the, I just share just a few of those things because everyone listening and watching right now can do something. Mm-hmm. Could be a little, can be a lot, can be time, can be money, can be prayer. It can be a number of things, but the important thing is to do that, which God moves you to do. And, um, so I'll just leave it there and let you come back. But those are some exciting things. I could go on and on with what God has done through people, um, and, uh, willing to be used of him. And it's so exciting when we see it so grassroots like that, so listener supported that it's not some big group that said, oh, here's what we want to do and we're going to fund this. Um, it, it all the more gives glory to God, I think, and mm. uh, allows us to say, we don't know how this was, humanly speaking, it, 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 it wouldn't have happened. But God's people and God's timing and God's way came together and we see what great things He hath done um, as a result of that. If you could maybe just, and I know we don't have a lot of time here, but talk a little bit. So many times people think of our ministry as staying in the gap, um, our radio or TV, but uh, you know, maybe differentiate what American Pastors Network is, how that started, and how the goal in the very beginning of American Pastors Network was speaking truth in the public square and how that mm-hmm. fits so well with those opportunities that came with radio and, and then different uh, media opportunities. Isaac, great question, uh, because... We're American Pastors Network because all of us who are co-hosts on the program, our leadership team are those who are called to preach. Now, we have Dave Kistler, who's an evangelist. We have a missionary. Gary Dahl, one of the original, and Danny Melanie, I mentioned him, are pastors in the pulpit. I don't pastor a church, but I was a minister of God in government, and I preach. You are a pastor. You preach. All right, so we are the American Pastors Network with a focus on the pulpit. Why? Because the Bible focuses on the importance of the pulpit. So that's why we are there. And the original goal was to help motivate and educate and encourage and link arms of Bible-believing pastors across the country. Now, into that, a few years after we began, is when the radio station stepped forth said, why don't you demonstrate on a public platform, a pulpit, so or speak, or so, so to speak, what it looks like for pastors to actually take and use the Word of God and compare and link those things to what's happening today. And that came, then Stand in the Gap Radio, and then later, some years ago, Stand in the Gap TV. But it was all for the same purpose, Isaac. It was pastors, taking the Word of God, and in this case, like on this radio program and others, headline news of the day, concerning coming approaching it from the authority of Scripture perspective, a biblical worldview perspective, linking the dots between how to understand what is taking place from God's Word perspective, make sense of it, so as to edify and equip all those who have an ear to hear, eye to see, and those who are committed to being salt and light in this world. So God has really given us now, in essence, through Stand in the Gap Radio and TV, a national pulpit that can reach millions of people. It's an amazing thing, but that is just the kind of thing that God loves to do. Yes, he does. And uh, praise be to the Lord for all of that. We're going to take another quick time out to listen to some of our partners, and we'll be right back on Stand in the Gap today. We want to come back and look at how God has grown 
the American Pastors Network, and Stand in the Gap Media over these last few years. When you tune in to Stand in the Gap today, you'll hear relevant, applicable information to help you better understand the cultural issues of our time. The biased liberal media narrative confuses and distorts the truth, but our hosts and guests provide focused analysis by combining personal experience with wisdom taken from God's Word. One of our frequent guests, George Barna, had this to say. We know from the research that I've been doing that churches are not terribly interested these days in helping people to understand and know how to think biblically about the issues and the conditions and situations that we face. And so that's one of the things that I love about being on your show is that I know every time I go on, it's not just going to be an exercise. We're trying to push people closer to biblical truth, and that's worth getting out of bed in the morning for. Tune in to Stand in the Gap today by visiting our website at standinthegapmedia.org. That's standinthegapmedia.org. Did you know that since 2017, Stands in the Gap's been airing a nationwide weekly television program? Viewers report that they never miss a program. One father shared how he's been using one TV series entitled Principles of National Renewal for his homeschool students' government and economics class. What a great way to combine excellent programming with instruction of the next generation about our nation's godly heritage and our biblical civic responsibilities. Whether this issue or any of the wide range of potential themes and subjects, every one of them reflects a thoroughly biblical worldview excellently presented and biblically accurate. You can easily find Stand in a Gap TV across America on such networks as Lighthouse TV, Dove TV, VCY America, most all cable networks, and now internationally on Albanian TV Channel 7. Archived TV programs can also be found on our website at standinthegapmedia.org or on our YouTube channel under Stand in the Gap TV. Today concludes this week's focus on the whole armor of God. If we're to stand against the devil's schemes, we must gird with truth, then add a breastplate of righteousness, gospel shoes, and the shield of faith. The Apostle Paul concludes by saying, Then take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr with the American Pastors Network and another Stand in the Gap Minute. The salvation helmet adorns and protects. It's the hope and joy of salvation, giving confidence in battle and making life bearable in trials. The sword of the Spirit's the Word of God and our offensive weapon, used by the believer but empowered by the Spirit. It's powerful, absolute, edifying, rebuking, encouraging, never changing, a solace in storms, a light in the night. More powerful than the devil's schemes and demonic deception, the sword of the Spirit prevails. Will you put on the whole armor of God with us at Stand in the Gap Radio and TV? Sign up at standinthegapmedia.org. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today, discussing the pressing issues facing our culture from a biblical and constitutional perspective. Now let's rejoin our host. Welcome back to the program, and before we go back uh, to Sam talking about some of the things that the Lord has brought into the American Pastors Network and into our Stand in the Gap uh, media uh, ministry, especially, that has really grown it, I want to talk to our producer, not so much about the history of APN, although I I am curious, Tim, how long you've been uh, working at the American Pastors Network with Stand in the Gap Media, but then if you have any uh, information, any updates of things going on that uh, you could let us know about some of the resources that are available for our listeners. Well, Isaac, to answer your question, I actually have been around the American Pastors Network. I just passed six years here working on staff here in 2023, back in March. But actually, I became familiar with Sam Rohr back in 2014 when he was speaking at my church at that time on an event that another guy that's on this program, Jamie Mitchell, was also associated with that church at that time. And so Sam came to speak every year at the Civil Government Sunday that they were doing. And so that's where I became familiar with Sam. Sam and I met, but I had known about Sam years before when he was running for governor in 2010 here in Pennsylvania. So Sam and I met in 2014. I just felt a need to go up and talk to him after the service and just talk to him a little bit about myself. At that time, I was still serving in the Air Force, and I had actually just finished up, or actually I was getting ready to finish up a master's degree from Liberty University, and I had a background in radio because I had been a DJ at many very 
various radio stations for about 15 years prior to meeting Sam and stuff. So I had lots of radio experience because I've been on many contemporary Christian music radio stations in other states and here. So Sam and I met, we talked a little bit, and we kept in touch over the next couple of years. And then 2017, I actually came on board here full time. Actually, no, I was actually a contractor at that time for the first year. I was doing stuff for our app and putting our show up on the app and doing a couple of other things, social media things. And then 2018, I became an official full time employee here at the American Pastors Network. So I've now been here for about seven years and it's been good. So, um, excuse me, I, I mean six years, pardon me. I just said seven years, but I'll be here for six years. Next year will be seven years. <laughs> But one of the things I also do behind the scenes is I have wear a lot of hats. And as the years go by, I actually pick up more hats, it seems, of things I'm doing behind the scenes, even though my major job is to do the radio operations stuff. But one of the things we do here is we have these things called podcast Q&As. And do you ever find yourself too busy to listen to an entire Stand in the Gap Today show? Well, did you know we have shorter audio segments of somewhere between 2 and 11 minutes covering various topics discussed on our Stand in the Gap Today radio show? We call these podcast Q&As, and these are podcasts that are good for listeners who desire to hear a short segment on a certain topic. We have many different topics, biblical worldview, the Constitution, Islam, finances, lots of stuff. We have a vast archives. You can check it out on our app and on our website, standinthegapmedia.org. And then if you find something that you really like, you can go back and look at the whole show in your archives if you desire. But check out our podcast Q&As on our app and at our website, standinthegapmedia.org. Also, we're on all the major streaming platforms, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify. If you do any of these, if you are signed up for them, please go ahead and sign up for our podcast. So every time they are loaded, you can get it to your smart device every time a new one is released. And additionally, if you're a subscriber to our podcast through these platforms, please rate us because these things called algorithms help people see if you give us a good rating or at least even if you give us a rating, ratings will help other like-minded listeners and individuals to find us as they search for podcasts. And thank you in advance. And once again, I mentioned it before, I'll quickly say it. We have two great websites, AmericanPastorsNetwork.net and StandInTheGapMedia.org. StandInTheGapMedia.org has a lot of content over there, lots of archives of radio and TV programs. AmericanPastorsNetwork.net, you can sign up for our e-newsletter. You can find out a lot of information about state chapters, lots of the things that we're talking about today. Lots of information is there, too, on AmericanPastorsNetwork.net. So there's always a lot to talk about, Isaac, but we're celebrating 10 years, and we're looking at 10 years, so I will go ahead and send it on back to you. Oh, thank you so much, Tim, and uh, I, I do enjoy those um, podcast uh, Q and A uh, episodes. I'm able to use those sometimes. Just somebody has a question about something. Sometimes I'll point them to our archives, maybe to a whole program. But uh, oftentimes, just one of those Q and As is perfect for it. Uh, sometimes for preaching, I'll pull out uh, a Stand in the Gap TV episode and maybe use the whole thing. It's only about 25 minutes. Um, use that for like a, a Bible study, a Sunday school, or something, or just pull out a clip of it, maybe a question and answer from one of our guests, uh, just one you know, quick clip, two, three minutes or less, and include that in my slides when I'm preaching. So I, I know a lot of pastors that I've gotten to know. In fact, I just met a young pastor this week, and he and I are going to be getting together for breakfast soon to talk more about the American Pastors Network, and they hear about these things and some of the initiatives we have going on and, and things like that. They They get very excited about it. But staying in the gap media has definitely been a huge ministry um, partner that we're on, you know, we're part of the American Pastors Network. It has really been something that has helped a lot of pastors, as you know, Sam. And I know it's, it's helped me personally as a pastor. Um, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering about that name, staying in the gap, because at the very beginning, you know, with American Pastors Network, and you met with some pastors. Um, that that name was a part of the description of what you wanted to be. Could you kind of talk to us about how that that name for the the media ministry of the American Pastors Network, uh, how it started? Yeah, and and Isaac, that's a great question too. And it's and it's amazing when um, and people listening and watching me right now, many have been in positions where perhaps. God's allowed you to start or become a part of a ministry or whatever it may be, even moms and dads in the home. He puts ideas before us, and we take it and build upon it, and out of that comes something more than we expected. That's that happens. That's what happened here with American Pastors Network. But the use of that phrase, Isaac, when it came time, when these folks stepped up and said, we'll give you some radio time, if you can put something in a spot that uh, in in a, in a position every day, like the, this program here today, stand in a gap today, every day, Monday through Friday, an hour a day, is a lot of time and effort that it requires. Well, were we willing to commit to that? All that kind of thing. Well, one of the things is, what are you going to call it? 
Is it going to be an American Pastors Network radio program? Well, that's very uninteresting <laughs> as an example. And from that, the Lord laid in my heart, well, let's, let's call it that which we are actually trying to encourage people to do. Let's stand in the gap. Well, where did that come from? Well, it was a verse from Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. When Ezekiel the prophet, like a prosecuting attorney, laid down the accusations against Israel that God laid down against them as a nation, he laid that out. And then in that passage, when, when God delineated their sins, the prophets, the princes, and the priests, all in Ezekiel 22, and people can go and read that. It's just so applicable to America today. God ended up by saying, and I looked for a man among them, the, the people, willing to stand in the gap for truth, ostensibly for God's word, that I should not destroy the land. And God said, I found none. Well, when I had read that many, many years ago, was that verse that God used to move me from business into public office? and to move me from public office and to run for statewide office. And it was that same verse that really was behind the visionary aspect of what now become the American Pastors Network. It seemed only appropriate. It seemed only appropriate, Isaac, that, well, what phrase better reflects the heart of our original pastor group and my heart than that? stand in the gap. And so that's where it came from. Um, it dis it's descriptive, but it's biblically based, and it's a question that comes right out of the mouth of God. And that's the question that we put out every day. Will you, are you willing to stand in the gap? And the program, radio and TV, and everything else we do, really becomes a bit of a mechanism for raising that question, bringing the relevant issues of the day together, linking it through the eye, biblical worldview of how God looks at it, just like he looked at Israel, and then to say, here's the biblical solution. We link the biblical principles with the issues of the day. We say making sense out of nonsense. <laughs> and then we always leave every program, Isaac, you and I do on the TV, and we do on this radio program try to almost always end up with some type of application or solution. Now, what do you do? What's, what's the biblical remedy for this circumstance mm -hmm. that we've tried to spend time on with special guests and other things in the program? And that ultimately is, and we say oftentimes, <laughs> decide to pursue the truth, Proverbs says, embrace the truth, all of mm -hmm. Scripture says, and then stand in the gap for truth. That's really mm -hmm. the calling that God has put before all of his people, and that's really to the best of our ability, Isaac, what we try to do through this program. But that's the history. That's the application of it. And, and, and through it all, we've seen people hungry for that, pastors mm -hmm. hungry for that connection, people in the pew that, you know, just listening, hungry to hear that on radio, to watch that on TV. Um, could you just real briefly explain how our ministry, I mean, we've, we've worked with things going on in, in the Ukraine for quite a while, um, but uh, could could you talk about how even lately our ministry is, is becoming even more international than it was, even though we are the American Pastors Network? I can indeed, and we've referenced it already at just one spot before there, but uh, through a contact that God brought up when I went to Israel in December with someone from Europe, referred to a Channel 7, Albania, a TV network there that reaches Moldova and Upper Macedonia and Northern Greece and, uh, and uh, part of Serbia and Albania, that area, uh, only 3% Christian there, lots of Muslims, but they have an outreach that's reaching millions of Muslims. They're coming to the Lord. That individual saw our program and said, you know, you are doing what none of my, rate, my TV programs are doing. You do more than just preach the gospel and share biblical principles, you actually connect it to the issues of the day. And our people here are longing to know, how do we take and apply Scripture to the issues that are affecting them, just like us? That's now underway in the Netherlands. I think the Lord's going to open up and opening up a door for radio and TV in Western Europe and in a country or two in South America. So Isaac, this is of God's doing. Again, just one more evidence of how great He is. 
Well, that, that is so exciting, Sam. We're going to take our, our last break and come back and talk about what we are doing to celebrate this decade uh, of faith and courage that, that God has used at the American Pastors Network. We're going to hear from some of our partners, and then we'll be right back after this time out. Hi there. I'm a mom of two and a homeschool mom. I use BGU Press materials for our children because it supports what we believe, it offers a biblical worldview, academic consistency, and encourages my kids to do their own critical thinking. BJU Press content is supported by the latest educational technology, and this is a huge plus for us. Our household income is modest, so we can't afford to send our kids to a local Christian school, which is why we're excited BJU Press textbooks, teacher's manuals, and instructional videos are flexible and also really academically sound. We tailor the materials to each child so they can move through their courses at a speed that keeps them engaged and challenged. Each course perfectly fits all their needs and they're making really good grades. Using BJU Press materials also gives time for involvement in our local homeschool association sports and fine arts programs. Find out more by going to BJUPress.com. That's BJUPress.com. For years, faithful Christians formed nonprofit foundations or trusts to preserve their ability to generously give to their favorite causes or ministries even after their death. The problem? Professional managers, pressure from left-wing agendas, and even family members with opposing views hijacked the original donor intent. This is sad, but true. But this subversion of purpose can be prevented. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr of the American Pastors Network, and I'm glad to recommend Capstone Legacy Foundation in Wayne, Pennsylvania, an experienced and capable Christian community foundation. Established to help you set up a ministry, a giving structure guaranteed not to be hijacked, or a place you can donate cash or non-cash assets like stocks, bonds, or property, Capstone's designed to help you achieve immediate tax savings and give you needed time to decide how to prayerfully allocate your giving. Contact Capstone at 610-688-8890 or visit them at capstonelegacy.org. Don't trust the TV depictions. This is Ken Ham, editor of the expose Glasshouse, Shattering the Myth of Evolution. If you ask someone to describe a caveman, they'd probably use words like unintelligent or less evolved. You see, most people's view of cavemen comes from TV programs that depict so-called cavemen as dumb, hunchback brutes who can only grunt a few syllables. But that picture is a lie. We know now that these people who lived in caves made musical instruments and tools, wore jewelry and makeup, heated their cave homes, and even used a lunar calendar. Don't get your view of our ancestors from the media. Look to God's Word, which tells us all people are descended from Adam and Eve and made in God's image. Discover answers to combat evolutionary teaching when you visit AnswersRadio.com and listen to this program again and many others when you go to AnswersRadio.com. Here's Twyla Brace with today's Health Freedom Minute. As we prepare to celebrate America's independence, our organization, Citizens Council for Health Freedom, headed to Washington, D.C. for four days of meetings on Capitol Hill, plus one Senate briefing and a presentation to a room full of conservative staffers. In total, we had 18 one-on-one -on -one meetings, including two with members of Congress. We shared our work to create a parallel system of health freedom, to reform HIPAA by restoring patient consent requirements, to repeal the unique patient identifier, and we asked them to eliminate the woke words, social determinants of health, from every bill. In one meeting, a staffer said, you're a breath of fresh air. You're not coming in here asking for $10 million. No, I told him, all we're asking for is freedom. Help us secure health freedom for all. Visit cchfreedom.org. That's cchfreedom.org. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today. For more information, visit our website at standinthegapradio.com. Welcome back to the Stand in the Gap Today Friday program, and we're looking at a decade of faith and courage and talking with Sam, looking back 
at uh, the 10 years that it's been since uh, the Lord allowed the American Pastors Network to get started. And, and then through that, the uh, Stand in the Gap Media, Stand in the Gap Today, Stand in the Gap Weekend, Stand in the Gap Minute, Stand in the Gap TV, Sam, um, I'm trying to think if there's other Stand in the Gaps um, media things, and well, the books and videos and things like that have, that have gone along with it. I think we have an audio book coming out uh, within the next couple of weeks. So, so just a lot of really neat things that the Lord has done, and, and we want to give all the glory to Him and thank all of our listeners, viewers, all of you who have prayed for us, interacted with us, and uh, and many people who helped in interesting ways behind the scenes to to open the doors that American Pastors Network and Stand in the Gap Media could get started and could get open. So, uh, Sam, as we come on this 10th anniversary, this, this is a pretty big deal uh, to, to see a ministry like this flourish and grow over these 10 years. And, and it just it seems like every year there's a whole other level of ministry that the Lord is opening up for us to get to do. Uh, but what is being planned to celebrate this big, you know, this milestone? And, and maybe I could even say, who who do we expect to be able to come? Uh, I think we have a couple of our special guests, one that's very uh, regular and another that's on quite often, that are already planning to come this fall when we celebrate. Could you just talk to us a little bit about some of those details, the the what, when, and, and who's going to be there? Okay, Isaac. And if you don't mind, what, when, who, and how? Why? If I can't, there we let, go. <laughs> let me let me start with why first, uh, and and that is this. Throughout Scripture, there is a principle, and God laid it down uh, all through Scripture. But He laid it down particularly to His nation of Israel. And I go there often. We go there because God goes there, and they're an example. Well, God told Israel, a chosen people miraculously delivered from bondage, taken through the desert to the promised land. And God said to them, in Deuteronomy in particular, a book that just lays down the foundational principles for God's interaction with the nation. He said this, I'm going to give you a land, goodly houses, security from your enemy, plenty of food, good health, leader, not a follower, he called the head, not the tail. And he said, I'm going to pour out blessings upon you. And here's the warning. He said, but when that time comes, when you are immersed and overwhelmed with the bountiful blessings that I will give you, warning, do not think that you are the source of those blessings. Because if you get to the point where you think that it was not me, but it came from your own hands, then God said, I will take and step in, and I will turn all those blessings into cursings. All right, now, what it's, what's he actually talking about? And, I, and that's what we're trying to emphasize, uh, Isaac, during this 10th anniversary, look back and look around and look ahead, is the concept of gratitude, Gratitude, being thankful to God, is both a command, it's a part of a warning, if we want blessing to continue, personally, family, national, we will be grateful. How do we be grateful? Well, we look back and we give God the glory for what He has done. And that's what God did when he, the children of Israel crossed the, the Jordan River, and even on the behind me, for those who are watching, there's a, there's a picture has some stones on the one side. When the children of Israel crossed the river, God said to them, take 12 stones out of the river and make a monument on the bank. Purpose, that when your children see them in the years to come, you can tell them, use it as an example of looking back and saying, now this is what God has done for us. That's being grateful, Isaac. That's why, Trent, that's why Thanksgiving as a day was established in the beginning of our country. Thank God for what he did. Okay. That's what we want to do. The other thing about gratitude is not just that it's a connection to the blessing of God, but it's also the greatest antidote to the judgment of God. Why is that? Because it's when pride is established and pride raises up, Isaac, that God steps in and says, I hate pride because, because it becomes idolatry and God turns it around. So gratitude it's a command of God, it's an assurance of God's blessing, and it's the greatest antidote because pride and gratitude, thanksgiving, 
cannot walk together. So that's what we are wanting to do, bring glory to God. And so what, and thank him for what he's done. And that includes thanking people for what they have done. We've just mentioned a few. We want to do that in an, in an, an event fashion. And we're doing a, planning on doing that November the 14th. So people, as they're listening and watching, mark your calendars for that. We'll have more information on our website soon. But mark your calendar for the evening of November 14th. It's going to be at High Point Baptist Chapel. I say that for those who can look at it. It will be on the website. It's at an area that's going to be fairly easily accessible off the turnpike. It'll be easy for people to get to. It's a church setting. It happens to be my own church, and it's part of the reason why we're doing that. But we're going to have, in addition to a full auditorium of people, we're going to have two guests, and you mentioned them. Um, George Barna, Dr. George Barna, who's been with us for such a long time on this program, will be joining us as a guest. And the also, also the Honorable Michelle Bachman, who's been a friend, a personal friend for a long time and a friend of this ministry. She also will be with us. All of our co-hosts are going to be there. Our entire Stand in the Gap team are going to be there. Uh, our original team of the 12 pastors I mentioned, the Lord willing, will all be able to be there. And we want to take and recognize as many people as we can, some of these faithful prayer warriors from a long time, some of those who've been giving financially faithfully, and a whole host of things. We want to do some things that will highlight, bring glory to God, express gratefulness to the Lord and to people, which is due, appropriate to do, hear from our guests, and then we'll have some other things, some music and some other things that will be a wonderful evening. In addition, Isaac, then, if the Lord tarries, then lay out another five-year plan that if, again, the Lord tarries, how people can help this ministry, which God has done so much with, to reach millions more people more quickly, more effectively, with biblical truth, the authority of Scripture, biblical worldview, and how to stand more effectively in the gap for truth. Well, Sam, I do hope that many of our listeners and viewers will be able to come in person and attend that again, Lord willing, um, in November. But uh, for those who maybe can't come or even those who can come as well, um, I would just love to have you talk about some of the things that our listeners can do to, to help us, to support us, mm. to be involved. Mm. And then I, I want to give you time, Sam, if, if we can get all of this in, for you to close our program in prayer as well. Uh, Isaac, there are three things that we're saying um, that, that people can do. Now, not everybody is going to be able to travel to physically be there, all right? But we want you to mark your calendars, and we may pre provide some other additional ways to participate, perhaps if you're not there, but want you to be there. That'll be one thing, and we will have the website, standinthegapmedia.org. You can go there. Now, there'll be a page that will have some things on it. It'll be more interactive in the, in the days shortly ahead. Second thing is, we're inviting all of you who watch us and listen to us to participate in gratefulness. Would you take and write, write a note in how God has used Stand in the Gap Radio, American Pastors Network in any of its capacity, Stand in the Gap uh, TV, to help your life, to encourage you, to equip you, to edify you. In other words, you can bless us, express gratefulness to us, the Lord through us, and encourage others. And the last thing is then to consider giving a special amount, perhaps a large amount, a small amount, a widow's might amount um, for APN and a special anniversary love gift. We'll have more on the website to give more opportunities and explanation of how all of these things can be done. So mark your calendar, share a note of gratitude, and plan on giving sacrificially to American Pastors Network. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Sam. Thank you all for listening and uh, continue to pray for us at the American Pastors Network. And until next time, I pray that you will be standing in the gap for truth wherever you are. If you like today's program, tell a friend. You'll also want to hear Stand in the Gap Weekend and watch the nationally syndicated Stand in the Gap TV program. We present the news of the day truthfully, carefully, and consistently from a biblical worldview and constitutional perspective. If you're hungry for the truth, visit StandInTheGapMedia.org to find all our programs and the stations that carry them. 
While you're there, be sure to download our free app and support this ministry with your best financial gift. Then join us again right here Monday through Friday for another program of Stand in the Gap Today.